everybody, and welcome. You have another episode of Opre Sales with Jack and Larson here today. Jack, how are you doing this afternoon? Doing wonderful. Yeah, it's a great day. How about you? I'm doing great. It's been a few weeks since we've done this. I'm really excited about this one here today. I'm really excited to dig back into it. Yeah, it sure has. Lots of, lots of big stuff happening over here that uh, will be announced in the not-too-distant future, but it's a good reason for the break, but uh, time to get back into it. Yes, indeed. It's certainly been a busy couple of weeks, but Let's get into it. But before, of course, before we get into it, I know it's well, it's two o'clock right now. It's not really beer drinking time, but right now I got a nice little Red Bull. Keep me going. We got some big announcements. Got to keep the gas on. What are you drinking today? Yeah, I've had plenty of caffeine already. So going with the, my favorite NA beverage here, Spindrift. Uh, good for the middle of the afternoon. Excellent. Excellent. Well, cool, Jack. Well, you know, I think on this episode here today, we're trying a different theme that we want to kind of bring to you all. And it's uh, in the spirit of, you know, how we built this. We want to talk about why we built and specifically what we're talking about here today is something that we're releasing here in the probably next week or two called process intelligence. Um, so we'll get into all that stuff, why we built it, you know, what we saw in the marketplace, but really what it stems down to is reporting. And, you know, we've been doing this for years now and, you know, reporting is not a new or novel concept. A lot of solutions have reporting out there, but we specifically waited. We waited on building reporting uh, for a number of reasons here, but, uh, you know, let's talk a little bit about that. Why did we wait? Like, I'm curious to get your perspective. Why do we wait on reporting? What were we seeing? And uh, let's get into it. Yeah, it, you know, it is weird in the, in the startup space, right? I, I hear so much, build what your customers are asking for. And we had people ask for reporting for a while now, like almost an embarrassing amount of time. But we waited and waited and waited to actually build it because you just, when, when it comes down to reporting, you have to make sure that you can actually provide value based on the information that you have. And if we had built it earlier, we would have built something that wasn't truly valuable, at least in my opinion, uh, that really didn't move the needle for the organizations using our product to, to help them make better decisions and better influence their sales team. So I think ultimately we had to wait until we could identify the value that we could really provide and build the product around gathering and processing that information, uh, but also just making sure that we really had the right problem, uh, that, like the right problem area. Of course, as we talked about, we went through the pivot before with the product. And so we had reporting suggestions around our old functionality that just weren't right at the time. But ultimately, you know, you got to make sure you understand the problem and, and the value you're going to provide. Uh, because reporting, in my opinion, is best done when you have a deep plan about what you want to do and how you want to provide that information. Certainly. I mean, you know, we've been in a bit of flux over the past year, year and a half or so. And so any reporting suggestions felt more analogous to what we were doing previously with demo flow. But, you know, we have a new vision about where we're taking the product and how it can impact, you know, tens of thousands of sales and service reps out there. And so it was really just creating and getting the right type of reporting that supports our vision for the long haul, which was frankly in a bit of flux. Like we saw what we wanted to build, but, you know, the devil's in the details, right? Ideas are one thing, execution is everything else. And the central theme about reporting that we've been really focused on is if, if we provide reporting that doesn't inspire our users to take some sort of action, either a confirmation of doing the right thing or, wow, I need to change X, Y, and Z thing about my own process, in my opinion, it's frankly useless. Like, unless it inspires some sort of action or gives you some sort of insights about what you're doing right or wrong and what you can change, what are we doing here? So that was something that was a really core piece of what we were focused on as we started building and ideating about this. Yeah. So what did we see? Uh, I think you're probably best to talk about like what we, we found the area that I feel really, really good about now of that area. We can actually provide value. What did we uh, come up with there? Yeah. What did we see in the, what were the gaps that we saw in the marketplace? Well, uh, for those of you who don't know, like Gondola is a solution that helps provide playbooks in real time to guide reps, service and sales reps on the best you know questions to ask, information to gather, the right way to run a sales conversation, right? There are tons of solutions out there that help to uh, identify how prospecting is going. Like how many emails am I sending? What is the sentiment behind that? What are the opens, clicks, all that stuff. There's tons of reporting until you get somebody into the funnel. There's a lot of reporting once you get a deal moved along far enough to actually give you some confidence behind making a forecasting call, right? How well, how, am I gonna hit my number this, you know, this quarter? I'm sure all of you are doing it right now. If you're on a delayed offset month, you're looking at what's the revenue that's coming in, try to make a judgment call on what's your upside your commits and all those types of pieces there. So that was pretty much done. Like you have a lot of solutions out there that help with that piece. But what we saw is the middle of the funnel and specifically down to the granularity of a singular call for a singular rep. How well 
and what percent are your, your sales reps actually following your discovery call process, your demo process? Like, what are they actually doing and where are they missing things? Where are they really excelling and where are they missing things? And the whole idea behind this is we give you that percentage after that call. These are the micro steps, the how do you win a meeting over and over and over again that lead up into that forecast decision. So ideally, what we're providing to an organization is saying, hey, you know, Jane is doing an incredible job on her discovery call. She could tweak it just a little bit to help to impact that forecast. You know, John, is he's struggling right now. He is not getting the metrics or implications of pain. He does great on current state, but he's really missing these core concepts and it's leading to him committing deals that later fall flat. So these are the important things that lead up to that forecasting discussion and what we saw in the marketplace is, granularity down to a singular call, singular rep, and giving that immediate feedback on how you should change your process. Yeah, process being the key word there, right? Because anyone who's ever been a part of a pipeline review call, either one-on-one -on -one or with a part of a team, is there can be, like you said, those tools that say, hey, this is, this is the likelihood you are or are not going to hit your number for the month or quarter, but what do you do about that for the next month or quarter? Do you just like grind it out until, you know, the first of the month and start all over again? Like that's only going to get you so far, but yeah. what can you do to really enforce, or you know, not even enforce, but reinforce and build the process into your everyday calls and everyday sales cycles mm -hmm. so that you get to a better result at the end of your next month or quarter. And sure. that's really where we tried to focus is in the live meeting, in the live call, what are you doing and how can you measure what you and your team are doing to get better over time and, and improve over time, not just, look at what's in your CRM and give you a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Yeah, exactly. Well, the common theme we saw across hundreds of orgs that we've been working with is, well, we run, we're trying to scale MedPick or spin selling or Bant or Challenger or whatever it might be. And we run this kickoff call. We have this great training that happens. And for a month, we see great uptick, which is hard to measure, but great uptick in terms of how we're, we're adhering to that process. We're actually running MedPick. We're doing a great job right now. And then everyone plummets a month later and goes back to their old ways. That's a real problem there. Like, how do we create consistency and enforcement for the long haul and make sure that we're tracking people over time just to see how we can help them more effectively? And that's what really kind of sparked what we're otherwise calling process intelligence today here. So excited to dig a little bit more into uh, that side of the house, but anything else to add there, Jack? Yeah, I think, you know, to, to that's a lot on our product, which is good, but like to, to bring it again to the whole level is, we had to look for, I mean, it was like two years, you know, to call what it is of like, where is the real value and the need that we can help people with? And I don't regret at all the time we spent making sure we were going to build the right thing. And so that's, I think, my biggest suggestion for anyone listening is take the time to understand what's really going to drive the value for people. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, it was a, it was a very thought out process of holding out for, for a minute here. So um, but let's, if you're cool, though, let's dig in. Let's dig into process intelligence. I'm happy to give a little bit of an overview about what it's all about. And we can kind of get totally, yeah. Yeah, so essentially kind of like how I teed it up. So what process intelligence is, is to give you, like, on the front half, from a leadership perspective, we can say, hey, what is the more or less formula for the right type of discovery call? What information should I be asking? What should I be gathering? And, you know, what, is it, what does a perfect discovery call look like? And we look at that and meet with our customers and say, at each step of the sales cycle, what does you, you did a great job look like? Can you can you write that out for us? And what we see all the time is, you know, enablement and operations people, they actually have the answers to these questions. They have it, they have a beautiful doc that's all created with all these questions in it, and they're doing a great job of trying to enable reps, but there are areas that are falling short, being it front and center. And so in bringing that into the platform, they can give us the structure around what does should that look and then what we do is we're looking at, okay, what information is asked and answered and grabbing all that information and looking at a deal and saying, hey, they actually did really well on that discovery call. They got 67, 97%, 67, 97% on that discovery call. And then we can track that over time. So as additional trainings happen, and this is the really key part, as additional trainings happen, we can see how that rep is doing, if they're falling off, if they're getting better, if they're seeing a trend upwards, in terms of how well they're adhering to that process. So it marries perfectly with ongoing trainings, rolling out sales methodologies, and making sure we have that ongoing adherence process that we're all looking for. Yeah, I think two really important things there. You know, one, you talked about the process and, and like reinforcing the process. And I think with any reporting you build, you can't just identify the problem. I mean, you can, that's good. But what are you gonna do to help the, your customers solve that problem then? 
actionable reporting is the name of the game. Mm -hmm. Giving you a pretty dashboard can only take you so far. But if that information doesn't influence behavior change, then it's just more data, more data to consume and more data to work with. So, um, and so I think that making that reporting actionable and actually getting to a behavior change or at showing people their progress towards a behavior change is where the real best reporting is made. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I felt compelled to mention, cause you mentioned kind of the assets we've seen of people that have built these big decks or spreadsheets or whatever it might be of like, here, here's what a good discovery call looks like. And I mean, as a not salesperson by trade, I couldn't believe the size of some of these things that people saw. And so, you know, my question to anyone listening of your own sales process is, could you give that to somebody and have them run a successful discovery call on their next meeting without more than five minutes of, of explanation? And from what I've seen, it's unlikely that that's the case. And so that was kind of our, our goal starting out is how did you get, how do we really make it so that you can distill down your most important pieces into a measurable, repeatable win on a meeting that can be done by somebody who's only been in there for five minutes? Yeah. That's really well said. I mean, that is the right question to be asking yourself. If you're listening to this call and you work in operations, enablement, or leadership, it's like, if you were to hand that to a new onboarding, a uh, new hire that you just brought on, like how quickly would it take them? How much explanation would it take them to really distill down the information that is the most critical for them to be gathering on that individual call? And if you feel really confident in that answer, I'd say kudos to you. Like that is probably uh, fewer and far between than what we've seen out there. Um, and of course, if you're looking for help, we can always be a help there. But the point being is we provide that you know playbook throughout the entire sales cycle, but the measurability behind it, and make sure that we can actually track people and make sure they're they're doing the right things. Um, so I guess with that being said, Jack, anything else to add as a closing note here? I think the last thing I'll add is just iterate. Um, that's a common theme, right, in startups and product development in general. But this, even even though we waited so long, we're on our third iteration of reporting, even before we're going to be releasing this because. It takes a while once you have the idea to actually measure and get to that value realization and, and behavior change moment. So the iteration on um, not the data you're measuring, but also the value you're providing uh, is really important. So keep keep iterating uh, to get to that right spot too. Certainly, couldn't agree more. Well, thank you everybody for tuning in here. Uh, why we built this process intelligence. If you have questions, comments, concerns, leave them in the comments section or reach out to us directly. Thank you all for tuning in. We'll see you next week. Take it easy. See you everybody. Cheers. Thank <laughs> you.